I was told is you should try and open the talk with something interesting and exciting to grab people's attention. And I've got nothing. So instead, we're going to talk about buying for premium access and thank you, my source. Really? This can be summarised. We'd like to look on the other talks as visit the website or talk to us. E email works. I look like this. But if you are in the in the UK, then you can access the community to make rapid access through the UAS. You may or may not have experience with the UAS system, that's how you force it to the bank. But if anyone in your group collects data at Diamond, then they will be an experience on that. If there is uncertainty, it's a great time to have information. The chameleon now exists as an instrument, so you can request chameleon type and you can request associated microscope screen type. I find that looking at your grids helps, so it is best to also request some. So the Talos in particular is the it's the 200 kb screening that we tend to dedicate to this program. Write a short proposal. The emphasis is on the short, one, and there is an internal eBay review process. Generally, that we're just looking to make sure that these, these makes make sense. If there's any like criticism, is the one word. Because if we ever come back to some of it, it's just like. I hope we can change this slightly so to some difference. If you are not in the UK, you are still free at the point of use, and the access tends to be through iNext. There seem to be more forms to be filled in through that method. However, we have information on our website. But it, I'm saying it's a short proposal. Make it clear that you want access to the chameleon. Eventually, it works its way to us. We say yes. I want people to come and use the chameleon. That's the goal. And we can get examples. I next will eventually disappear and be replaced by a different bureaucracy. Probably there is Isidore, who's going to be one line for infectious disease and cancer. I think it's a call that has just opened. Last couple, last couple of days, if you can roll by your project into the, the cancer project, I am assuming that other other things will be available. But yes, and so because we have we have UK and non UK access methods, we have users from across the world in the most technical sense of that phrase. <laughs> <laughs> we have one group in North Korea who have done some absolutely fantastic work, but for Paul talking about like those chameleons all over the place. So. Yeah, I'm not surprised you've not seen access from the US because we have a ton of them. So. Yeah, other <laughs> options other than your blood itself. Yes. We are probably cheap. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Maybe another uh, question. Yes. Uh, is there access to instrument? Generally, the access has always been through iNext. If people do want to go through Instruct, they can. I think it would maybe just be a way of like getting your sample, your sample shipping feeds back. But so far, it's always been iNext. I find that to be the boundaries between Instruct and iNext are relatively good. I think that is some access to the Strasbourg machine by that. I agree, it's a great area of text. But we... I don't want the first contact with the user to be the portal. I would prefer that someone actually comes and says hello by some method, and then we can work out the best move that, move that fits. So for the benefit of everyone in the crowd, who perhaps hasn't done this before, including me, what's the bare minimum you want to see on that first contact? To have a discussion about the sample conditions and see a couple of micrographs. 
Like, I, I, I literally have feet for it to be alone. Like, we heard that the chameleon is a new way of depositing protein. I hear you have one, Let, let's have a chat. But normally someone's going to come, come to come to us. They've got a problem. Yeah. We have further orientation. <coughs> yes, I think we to work out. Yes. This is how we currently run the sessions. And I guess I, I took all from Miriam, but a lot of this, this, this sort of shape came around in court and we didn't have people on site. So I have had the shape of the session to change and to to change depending on the sample of the users' requirements. But currently, we've got two days. <laughs> this is a 48 hour session. I mean, what, what you're buying with your no money? is 48 hours of microscope slash chameleon slash scientist time. And so we're going to plunge some grids in the morning and arrange to plunge both of the eight grids. And this can be a couple of, this can be more than one sample. But if it is more than one sample, we're going to get the less thorough exploration of any individual sample. We want to then plunge those grids if it's more than one concentration, do that and then vary the wicking of the plunge time. So you say, well, we assume you want fast plunging because you come to us because you've got like an issue and the chameleon escapes problems by plunging quickly. But you also try and do some slow ones to give you a better chance of seeing the particles. Then we get them into the microscope and we're looking at the particle density. We're saying, is the ice thickness sensible? We're deciding which was the best wicking time. Generally, we're going to look at the fastest grids that have particles that we can see. And then we'll make a, we'll make a judgment and collect some data. What we're hoping to see is new organ group 2D classes. And then this data collection will sort of run overnight between day one and day two. At that point, we try and have a conversation about it. Either the user has been watching the microscope connect through a normal machine connection, but they're actually they're watching the instrument, or they're just looking at the automated data processing that's coming through ice by B, where everything's getting dumped into motion code, and do 3D classification, do 3D classification. And it's like, can I see a new thing? If the answer is that you still have the same depressingly consistent 2D classes as you had before, you might not decide to punch any more samples. If you can see something new, then it's like, great, let's go back to the chameleon, let's face another four grids. And we can either uh, put in a quick light touch rapid access proposal for cryos time, or we can ship the, ship the sample back. Some institutions are lucky enough to have, to have their own microscope. You may want to collect that in front of yourself. If you've got that picture on the bottom right, then that means that your local contact accidentally controls it or bear them again, which in eBay can happen. Things to think about. What do I want to see in the proposal? It's nice to have some biological context. I've taken a facility job, I've accepted I'm not going to change the world. So like it doesn't you don't you don't need to cure cancer yet, but we just want some information of like what, what the system is. What I'm really interested in is some preliminary EF data. Because we're not lining ourselves up as the first type that this protein sees. We want to say like does do 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 you have particles? What is the what is the pathology that we're looking at? And that will help us design the experiment. So for example, this is, a, this is a membrane protein that's showing a lot of uh, aggregation. But at this point, what I, what I would personally like to see is a little bit of biophysics. Because it could be the design aggregation at the air water interface, which is something that we can try and escape with the community. And we can do something fun. <coughs> but if I would like some proof that the sample wasn't completely attempting to say the naughty word there, in the tube. Like you want you want to know that things going into the chameleon is good and then you try and escape the pathology that's happening on, on the grid. 
So that can be size, size exclusion, and it can be something from electrical, electrophoresis, sacks, anything, but it's some information that the sample was once good in this size. And then just useful values of acts and things about sort of some concentration of protein samples, all of that sort of stuff. And a good experiment has a plan. It is, it is nice to have an idea of what we're going to do with the sample when we have to take it. Take it off ice, or depending on how many you've shipped it to us. Is there a ligand? Do you want to add that in your lab? Do you want us to add that? Do you want, do you want us to centrifuge it? Do you want us to have an incubation step? Like all samples are unique and within reason we can try and work around the requirements of the sample. We need to know those requirements. So, similarly, I'd like some, some evidence that the sample is going to be reasonably, reasonably stable. We want to have the suitable concentration. There is, like, there is discussion to be had, work to be done, what is a suitable concentration. Uh, we can assume that we want to be stable quickly, and the rough rule of thumb is that we're looking at the ten, about tenfold higher than your victim of concentration or more than two weeks ago. And there will be some proteins where that is too much, and there will be some proteins where that is not enough. So that sort of ball part is what we're talking about. So it's just very sad. You don't see anything. And then enough material so that we can have a goal. Like my, my typical setup is I'm taking seven, but seven and a half microliters into the machine, and the machine is taking five microliters of that seven and a half, you can take two and a half back. That five microliters will launch and be in forever. But you can freeze many, many grids from that. But if you want to freeze again the next day, you need another you need some more protein. Equally, if for some reason we have to load again because of the bubble, if you want to have some protein in there to select that. And um, realistic expectations. Because a lot of the time samples are coming to us because nothing has moved. But about 30% of the projects we're getting them into a virus and we're doing really, we're doing really cool things. Like the projects are valuable, otherwise we wouldn't dedicate so much of our time to them, so it's, it's worth it. And equally, that we little red hub that appeared on, on that sort of 3D location. Um, was enough to fix the sort of orientation problem with that. So it, you, don't, you don't need to get a completely even distribution of orientations, just 10 or 15% of the new ones are enough. So the next slide is just a conclusion. Look at the website, come and talk to us. I'll promise I'll have my name and my father, but also the best baby in this office. It's easy to find. That's that's me done. <laughs>
in a perfect world, what, what I would like is some dry ice to arrive with 5 10 micrograms and 10 micrograms of aliquots that are ready, that I can thaw out, freeze on the chameleon, and then I know that the next day, the next sample will be of the same quality as the previous one, instead of having sat in the fridge. But if a sample cannot be frozen, then you should not freeze it.